Hi everyone, we are here at Snowflake Summit and super excited to be with Hema Raghavan, uh, co-founder and head of engineering at Kumo. Uh, Hema, this was uh, long due. I know we met uh, around the same time last year yeah. and I've seen all the amazing growth that Kumo has had. Uh, so one reason I wanted to definitely chat was first thing, tell us more about what Kumo is and uh, also what's uh, all about the growth uh, in the last one year. So tell us more. Thanks, Ravit. So, uh, yes, I'm Hema. I had engineering at Kumo. I'm also a co-founder. Yeah. And uh, Kumo is uh, the creator of the first relational foundation model for AI. And what this gives you is the ability to predict any future-looking query. Think right. customer churn, think uh, recommendations, think fraud. Mm. Uh, and now, with our latest innovation, without any training. Oh. So the wow. Kumo RFM has no training. In our previous iterations, okay. we had completely eliminated feature engineering, and it used to take us like, what, two to three hours for a model when my old team at LinkedIn used to take six months to Very build the first model. And yeah. now we brought that time from even two to three hours down to zero with our fully pre trained model on relational data warehouses. That's pretty uh, good and very interesting, the work that you all are doing in this space. I'm pretty sure a lot of enterprise leaders are wanting to learn more and more. I know for a fact where I'm here, obviously the booth was, is super packed and I see people around uh, and wanting to take the demo, but I'm kind of curious to learn from you. Since you've been here, you've been talking to a lot of enterprise leaders, you talk to a lot of customers day yeah. in and out. Uh, what do you think about uh, why are enterprises leaning on a personalization in the era of information overloaded? Yeah. What are your thoughts there? Great question. So let you let me walk you through my journey Please from do. this morning. Yeah. This morning I woke up and I discovered there's no milk in my fridge, but I want to prepare for summit. Right. What do I do? I open an app. I say, hey, can I order? You know from my nearest store, I'm willing to wait to, to make my coffee. Yep. But my app knows that I do this every yeah. few days. Okay. And so okay, it nice. knows what store at the top and it knows what that Hema's gonna order milk. Okay, so okay, the recommendation is already the out there. The recommendation, right? right? So that's the yeah. first pre prediction, a decision based on my past behavior that it had to do. Is it also the timing? Sorry to uh, it is ask. The timing. Is it also right the timing? message, ah. right time, right user. Okay. Okay. And then after that, I say, okay, you know what? I have to go to summit, and today's the last day of school. My kids don't have camps. I need to log into the you know the camp aggregator website, right, right. and I'm like, and that thing also knows that. Yeah. Hema has a nine-year-old and a 12-year-old, and she's probably looking for camps that have availability, and this is the typical, you know, basketball and so on. So that's, again, another deep personalization. Yeah, so exactly. I was done with both of these in a matter of 10 minutes. Nice. I get into my car. My phone is an Android-based. Uh, right. I mean, uh, my car is an Android-based car, okay. right? Okay, yeah. It knows my calendar, so it knows where I have to go. Yeah, I, exactly. That's another decision. Yeah, exactly. Right? So he has to punch in the address. So decisions are coming over and over again. So in this area of information overload, what you said, right? Everything is competing for our attention. Right, exactly. The phone, the TV, the only app that is going to, you know, cut it is the one that does personalization well. The other part is trust. Because fraud is also a prediction problem. So true. Right? So true. Yeah. So when I swipe my credit card, every credit card transaction, I would not use my card the way the way we do it today until we you know those models are actually highly accurate. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So trust, attention, these are all the factors that play into our lives. And you know, there's so much productivity in our lives, but the apps that will be part of that story are the ones that get personalization done well. Love it. I think uh, you gave me a very cool example of how, now I kind of start thinking about, you know, how personalization kind of plays a very important role and sometimes that's the thing when you're kind yeah. of, you know, looking at things, uh, there are huge enterprises which are doing the, uh, this sort of, you know, and using this sort of personalization yeah. when you're using apps. And now I kind of start getting the understanding behind it's the scenes. It's in every minute of every your minute. day, yeah. and, but now we've internalized it so much. Okay, that's fantastic. One yeah. more quick question around that is, why aren't 
LLMs or one size fits all solution? You know, what do they excel at and what they don't? Do you have any thoughts around that? Yeah, so LLMs are a great tool for knowledge. Right. right, so they can index all of the world's knowledge. Yep. They, I can query it. I can even prepare for meetings. You know, I can uh, understand, like through you know people's public profiles, right. what I sh you know what I need to know about them and or companies or do all of my research. It's brought that productivity play. Yeah. Right. Uh, but they don't give you these point decisions. Right. Like it doesn't have. Uh, I think you mentioned the point of timing, right? Timing. It doesn't right. have that table view of all the clicks yeah. that I have done, all the non-clicks that I have done and ignored and uh, in the past, Very right? Important. So it yeah. doesn't have that. So at the most, you can prompt it with a few profile pictures of me to get a prediction, but the deep data that you have in your enterprise is your the price point that I, you know, I will normally buy ad. Buy ad. Oh wow! Or I, really? I, I like my milk to be organic, or I like you know uh, that deep level of personalization data can't across, happen. And across so many tables, tables. Like an LLM can just read text. Yeah, it's exactly. It's not going to learn across exactly. all of the structure, right? Right. So how can you have a transformer technology that uh, looks across you know tens of tables? Like we have one customer who's using us for. Uh, risk prediction. Oh, they nice. have 30 tables. 30 different tables. Tables wow. with data, and we're doing prediction for risk for that. Okay, that's pretty interesting, yeah. and that's actually very valuable in terms of if we can get personalization to a level where now you get to a level like uh, understanding the timing, yeah. understanding what sort of milk preference yes. uh, do I have. Even maybe you know going in a Uber, if I kind of if they it, it already knows which Uber is it like the standard Excel. Exactly. Maybe according to the location as well. Sometimes if yes. I'm kind of going to the airports, I'm just taking Excel. Yes. So it should predict just an Excel exactly. during that time. So predictions are everywhere. And, and it also connects with your calendar. Sorry, it also connects with your calendar and timing. That okay now, Ravit has a flight at say 12 noon yes. uh, tomorrow. Uh, and that's when I have to give him a recommendation exactly. of Excel. And as all these agentic systems come in, right. agents are going to have to make decisions. Right. So I was reading somewhere, you know, LLMs can talk, but the doer uh -huh. is the decision, decision. engine, right? Yeah. And yeah. that's where, a, you know, product like Kumo, like Kumo is the decision engine. Nice. The agent is the one that's going to make the action. Right, exactly. Right? The LLM will be the interface. It will talk to you, synthesize the information so for you and so on. Yeah. yeah, this is fantastic. I think, uh, Hema, you shared some amazing insights and it's kind of a learning experience for me as well that how do things kind of, you know, yeah. work behind the scenes. Uh, I'm also wanting to learn, since we are on this topic of enterprises, enterprises rely on 20-year-old, you know, machine learning. We've all seen that. Yeah. And I know why they kind of come from there because yeah. obviously things move slower, at least in the regulated industries. But now things are kind of, you know, obviously changing to there are enterprise leaders who are very much interested yeah. to do things faster. They want to do things in AI. They want to use agents. Um, but what are, what are you kind of uh, excited about? And why do you think that 20 year old ML is still, you know, happening at different enterprises? Yeah. So I think the way, it, uh, you know, the 20 year old ML in enterprises largely means they were working with the uh, XG boost or logistic regression right. model, right? And for that kind of uh, model, you need so many data engineering pipelines. Right. Like feature after feature. So you've invested over, you know, two decades exactly. to engineer these legacy pipelines. Yep. So if you want to undo that, it is a cost. And then you have someone who comes and says, hey, I can move accuracy by 0.1% right. in the next quarter it is something. versus you spend three months re-engineering. I think it takes courageous leaders to say, you know what, I'll leave the 0.1 on the table. We're going to rewrite. We're going to take the modern data stack and then move 10% later. So it it takes definitely courage. takes courage, yeah. yeah. And then I also understand it is something which is 
uh, at the level at where they are kind of you know working around and with the data so much data yeah so that's a very good point that you mentioned i'm also wanting to know a little bit about the rag is like uh, all the rage right yeah uh, so where does it uh, fall short especially as ai agents are taking the spotlight now and things kind of move very quickly in the ai space yeah. as well that's what i've been kind of seeing since the last 3 years like yeah. now obviously we have the agents a to a uh, a lot many more things as well yeah. uh, what are your thoughts there so i think of rag as a toolkit that is needed yeah. to um, prevent the llm from hallucinating but so it's true. still contained in the llm like that very question answering summarization kind of use case right and within rag you can actually bring personalization right personalization. because if you say right. uh i am going to turkey on a trip and i want to explore xyz like these are what i like yeah. uh it the you know the rag can personalize so you know we we have customers who might call kumo to get a set of predictions and then anchor the rag on that personalization very important Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. I think that that is a very valid point that you're kind of talking about. Rag is important, but uh, I think agents also kind of you know running yeah. in a direction where they want to get the work done. Yeah, in and the most personalized way possible. Exactly, and agents are the ones that are going to be the doers. Doers, right? So the doers. LLM is the talker. So you yeah. need the talker, you need the doer, doer you need everybody. Well. Everybody yes. in the game. That's nice. Uh, also, why is AI you know and structured data key to tangible ROI? and why are companies dropping you know the ball now what's what's the thought process there yeah so uh, you know as we discussed in that early example right that clicked data the view data yep. all of that is in structured data right, right. and uh, that's where companies need to use like the the llm is not going to solve it yeah, you need yeah. an alternate technology exactly. but then if you're stuck in the old way of doing it then you're in these models which take 3 months 6 months to ship so do right so that's when you need like you know a kumo like relational foundation model or a graph transformer and so on where do companies drop the ball is actually related to that previous uh, point which yeah. is the data strategy you know right. rethink your data strategy look 5 10 years ahead and make bold moves you need to be courageous that's what i yeah. heard from you and you know and there needs to be leaders who are really wanting to get into the game because sometimes the results kind of evolve over time as yes. well you start with agents today maybe in the 3 years when you have trained the model so well there'll be something new after 3 years i'm pretty sure but then agents will still stay yes and that is what really maybe the enterprise leaders need to understand uh, when it kind of comes to the implementation process as well. Yeah, I was in a forum where Kevin Scott the CTO yeah, of Microsoft, Microsoft. was uh, you know advising a set of CTOs and you know he was saying that if you're waiting for all of these foundation models and LLMs to get really good to change your strategy in your company, you're going to be too late. Too late. You right. have to get yeah. in now and each of these foundation Work model companies will keep improving their models so you should assume that and build your strategy around That's that. That's so such a good point right because if i go back and see what happened say 2 years back uh, where, while we were using chat gpt or yes. other uh, you know obviously tools it was a different ball game altogether it used to hallucinate it used to not understand what we kind of you know trying to yeah. say or oh, the personalization point was kind of also missing out yeah. there but now the models are getting trained on how much we are using them right so if you're getting uh, if say i'm using chat gpt for the things that i'm doing yeah and if i'm late to the game uh, while i'm start like 3 years later it just becomes a challenge exactly. right but right exactly. now if i tell okay this is what i've done this is the show i'm doing with ema yeah. and uh, your other questions it can do so much more for me not only creating graph blogs i think multiple iterations of uh, uh, you know the the content that can be distributed on various channels yeah in my voice yes so exactly. i think you're so right and i'm just taking it as an example as an individual but at a company level you can do so much more i feel right i agree 100% that's Robert. awesome hema yeah. this is such a uh, fantastic conversation and uh, i'll keep the conversation going absolutely uh, and lovely meeting you 
thanks for uh, you know uh, sharing all the insights but uh, the great growth that kuma has had thank uh, you. congratulations and uh, we'll keep chatting we'll keep exactly. running this yeah. thank you thank you very thank much you. appreciate it yes. thank you thank everyone you. for joining us today